let's solve a problem. So we have an auto cycle air standard analysis using variable specific heats. It operates with a given initial temperature T1 and initial pressure P1 at the start of the compression stroke. The compression ratio is 9.5. The maximum temperature is 1100 Kelvin. Considering variable specific heats determined and a number of things. What you want to do is you want to go ahead and make sketches. Pressure, volume. The temperature entropy is also nice, but it's not as, I think, an, as, as useful as the pressure volume. Go ahead and list state one, two, three, four. Sketch it like that. If you use that, then you're consistent with the numbering scheme in the textbook. Make a uh, table of properties and then temperature or pressure. That's pr pressure in kilopascal and uh, temperature in Kelvin. When you deal with ideal gases, it's almost always convenient just to use Kelvin for your temperatures. A little easier there. And then we'll have some extra room out here, but state one, state two, state three, and state four. We recall that if we wanted to calculate things like eventually the thermal efficiency, network, heat addition, I find that for let's say C, Q2 to 3 is equal to U3 minus U2. I need the internal energies. So I really need the U's for each of those states. Uh, likewise, when I look at the work, uh, 1 to 2, it's going to be U2 minus U1. And when I look at the work, uh, 3 to 4, it's going to be U3 minus U4. And I have to switch this sign, uh, 1 to 2. All right. And the last one, Q4 uh, to 1 is equal to U1 uh, minus U4. This will be a negative entity. And the work 1 to 2 will also be negative. Sometimes I write them all as positive, but I'm trying to be consistent with the textbook. We know that we need those U's. So you put in the information that's given. There's three pieces of information given. 95 at state 1, 300 at state 1, and this is the maximum temperature of the cycle. That's state 3, right? So those are the three values and where they go. Um, if you wanted to, the, the TS diagram really shows you that that state 3, 1, 2, 3 truly is the maximum temperature. And then state 4. But logically, it's like, yeah, that's the, really the high temperature at state 3. All right. So how do I find U at 1? You just come to the table. It's 300. And I put in that value right there. True? So you have to go to the tables to get U1. So we have that 214.0, I think it's 07, but how do I find T2, P2, U2? Right. We're undergoing S equal to a constant compression. And what we know is the compression ratio is 9.5. So the compression ratio R being 9.5, that, that says that the ratio of V1 to V2 <coughs> is 9.5. True? And that's equal to V1R divided by V2R because it's, or VR1, depending on how you want to write it, VR comma 1, VR comma 2. So I look at this, and I make extra little column, V sub R. And I look at my air table, and I say, what was my value? 621.2, correct? Is that right? So I'll put in 621.2 for V sub R. What I do is I calculate V sub R2. So in this case, V sub R2 is V sub R1. Here, V sub R2 is equal to V sub R1 divided by 9.5. And you get some value, OK? Um, do I get? Uh, 65.389. Uh, Do I get that? 
I think that's what I get. Okay. Now, once I get that value, what do I do? Yeah. So you go into the table and you start looking in the V sub R column for 65 something. So what I did was I looked down in between the temperatures of 710 and 720. You'll find that 65.389 there. So what do you have to do? Interpolate. What value are you trying to get? U and T. True? So you get the U and T, and you find out that the temperature is maybe 716.6, and the U value is 525.5. So if you want a road map, it's like that. How about pressure at 2? How do I find the pressure at 2? Right. Use the relationship that it's always an ideal gas. So P1, V1 divided by T1 is equal to P2, V2 divided by T2. Is that true? Always for an ideal gas. And the only unknown that you have in here is the, um, um, the, the P2. Okay, so you calculate the pressure is a whopping 2156. Now we know the temperature is 1100. So we can look up U at 1100. It's uh, 845.3. And we can look up also V at 1100, 18896 and what about this pressure right here? How do I calculate P3? The same type of equation that this is also P3, V3 divided by T3, true? And uh, V2 and V3 are the same, so it makes it a little simpler, but you calculate the pressure at state 3 to be 09. This is state 4. All right, how do I get now from state 3 to state 4? Just like you went from 1 to 2, but this time instead of compression, it's expansion. And so the V sub R, uh, I look up 18.89, you multiply by 9.5, you get a V sub R of uh, 179.5, you go and interpolate and you pick up values for the internal energy at state 4 as well as the temperature at state 4 and I have that over here that um, here's the 1100 so we had the V sub R of 18.89 and then the other V sub R came in at um, 100 around 80 179.5 really close to this value right here just a little interpolation and you get 490.2 490.2 all right and then you use equation like this to get the pressure at 4 the pressure at 4 is 155.2 so now that we have that table all filled out we, we really have answered uh, the temperature at the end of the compression stroke, right? That was T2 equal to 717 Kelvin. The peak pressure, P3, 3310 kPa. The heat addition for the cycle, that was Q2 to 3, use U3 and U2, and we find that that is uh, um, three hundred and twenty kilojoules per kilogram. And the net work of the cycle, it's going to be the work one to two, um, the work uh, um, yeah three to four, and that is work net. 181.7 kilojoules per kilogram. And then the thermal efficiency is the ratio 
of the work net divided by the heat in, and it comes in at 56.8%. So we did use the table to solve that problem. And here are some numbers. So it shows you all the numbers, okay? So if you wanted to check and solve this problem on your own, you could. So the compression ratio is 9.5. Those are the three values coming in. I put the V sub R column right here, the U, the H. Why did we put H? We never did need it. You don't need it for this problem. But when we get to diesel cycle, you'll need the H for some of it. Okay. And uh, Q1 to 2 is 0, 3 to 4 is 0. Q net, uh, I'm sorry, the, the Q of the cycle where you add these up is 181.7. Here is the work, and notice the work of the cycle. Always find ways to check your work. They need to be the same, true? And if they're not, look for an error. Look for an error. Uh, and so one is a positive, one is negative, one is negative, one is positive. So all the signs look good. And the thermal efficiency is uh, calculated to be 56.8. Notice that the cold air standard equation depends only on the compression ratio and K for air is 1.4 when it's cold and that gives you 59.4 this is an additional approximation with the cold so it's not as accurate as the variable specific heats but they're close aren't they 